So in this, uh, in this demonstration, we're going to uh, show how to join two dissimilar metals. We've got a piece of stainless plate and a piece of brass tube. We're going to be using our Silver Braze 55T brazing alloy to do this process, along with a flux powder called our SP1. We've already uh, made up the flux into a nice smooth paste. What is flux? Why do you use a flux? Is obviously a simple question that many people will want to answer. So the reason is when we're applying the heat to the, the braze joint, there will be an oxide form. The metals react with the oxygen in the air and create an oxide. And the oxide prevents the brazing alloy from flowing and acting as the joining compound. So what we do is we apply a, a flux. A flux is a chemical cleaner. And as we heat it up, it has a, an affinity to suck in the air and the oxygen, and it chemically cleans the surfaces that we're looking to join together. So the first thing, again, with all brazing and, and joining of metals is ensuring we've got really good clean parts. So although this is a fairly clean piece of stainless, it's not bad, it's not good enough to try and braze with. So we're gonna use a bit of emery and just give it a rub to remove any oxides, any surface, any contamination that's on there, just to give us a nice, clean, active surface, as we call it. So that gives us that. You can have a bit of rag. Uh, we've got a bit of solvent here as well, if you want, or a bit of uh, nail varnish remover would work perfectly well as well, just to clean any residues off the metal. You can see there, there's still a, a fairly dirty surface. So we give that a good clean. With a part, this is a brass tube that we're gonna join onto there just to show and demonstrate the ability to join dissimilar metals. We've got a brass piece here, which again, fairly clean and tidy, but not clean enough to do what we're looking to do. So we're gonna give it a rub. Both on the outside, and on the inside. So at that stage we've prepared both pieces of material and we're going to apply a small amount of flux just to the area that we're looking to make the joint. So at that stage, just a small circle there, we're going to apply some to the bottom end of this tube, like that and a little bit on the inside as well and on the face that we're actually looking to braise. And we sit it on there in the middle like that. So that's prepared the joint, that's got us ready. We've got the flux applied and we've got our Silver Braze 55T rod ready to go. In this video, we're actually gonna show you using a fairly easily sourced domestically sort of commercially available um, DIY tool, propane uh, based uh, burner, which you can, uh, you can get from most DIY stores. Probably not the ideal piece of equipment for doing a, a, a joint like this, because the, the volume of heat that we can get in there is a little bit limited. But I wanted to show you the capability of doing it uh, in a DIY or a domestic environment rather than a commercial environment. Um, just to prove it can be done. So or it might not appear to be the best join, but it will actually create and produce, produce what we're after. Like all brazing, patience in making sure you get the thing hot enough. So I'm gonna fire up the, uh, the torch and start applying the heat. Now you can see very quickly that the water in the flux is boiling off and you're starting to be left with a white residue around the whole joint. Keep going round and round with the heat and we've now got the water boiled off and that's now the flux. So we need to keep applying the heat to the, both the base, the steel and to the brass tube until we start seeing the flux beginning to activate, little bubbles as it's doing its work, keeping the joint clean. You can see where you haven't got the flux, that it's going black round the outside of it. So the flux is keeping the joint area clean. 
Now with this torch we've got to apply quite a long time and quite a bit of heat and in other videos we'll show you doing a similar joint using an oxyacetylene torch but this will give you an idea what's possible in a, a, a fairly simple and cheap uh, gas heating source. So we're starting to get to a point where the brass is warming through now, the flux is activating, the steel's going black round there. And again, I'm gonna try heating it up right the way up. I wanna try and get the brass up to a cherry red if I can, but as I say, this is not ideal to be doing it. The steel's just starting to get warm enough now. So I'm going to try applying the heat, applying the brazing alloy. You'll see when it goes there, it's starting to flow round. And then we come back round this side. With a better heat source, you'd get this in one. But you can actually see where I'm applying the heat, the silver solder is going all the way round. And actually that has gone all the way round. So we've not had to apply any more. So we've actually achieved a stainless steel to brass braze just using a domestic plumber's uh, gas torch. The joint now it's completed and finished, when you leave it to cool down and we'll quench it and give it a clean up in a minute, the, the actual braze joint should be as equally strong as the two parent metals. Silver brazing alloys are used extensively in vibration conditions and uh, physical uh, moving parts. So hydraulics and things like that on diggers have a lot of the joints brazed together because of the vibration. So if it's done right, that should, that should hold together as equally strongly, if not more strongly, than the two parent metals. So we've just brazed this brass tube onto this piece of stainless plate just to demonstrate the ability to join dissimilar metals using the Silver Braze 55T. I'm going to hit the brass and I'm confident, he says, with it being fairly strong. You can see the stainless is moving, the brass is bending. And when we come back onto the bench, you can see that although the stainless piece has bent right the way up to where the brass is joining, the actual silver solder joint is still robust and strong. So it's a very, very efficient way and strong way of joining two dissimilar metals used in massive amounts of uh, different applications from automotive, heating, ventilating, air conditioning, you name it. So we've even managed to you know, bend a fairly thick piece of tube uh, and, and still got a nice strong joint there.